Today, we are gonna talk about flooring. We're in a renovation process of this old house. My son calls it a sandwich, and basically, you've got your foundation first you take care of, and then your roof, and then we work from the bottom up in addressing the issues that, are, that exist. Our foundation is in relatively good shape, except for one section I'll show you in just a bit. When we bought the house, the roof was already done, so we're okay there. Although, you, we're gonna see in this video a lot of issues that happened before they fixed the roof, a lot of water damage. Uh, but to, for our purposes in, in this video, we're, we're looking at the floors and looking at the progress that we've made so far and the progress yet to go. When we first saw these floors, we were hoping to be able to save them. Um, they, looked, they looked salvageable. But then as soon as you get into the first room, this hallway, uh, we ended up having asbestos, a layer of asbestos tiles and we weren't gonna tear those up. So our next transition was to put down uh, subflooring. Caleb's already put down a bunch of subflooring on this side of the house to, to bring the floors to one consistent level. We, we started in the basement to make sure that we had a, a good stable surface to build on. One of the big things we did was put in that double two by six beam with three screw jacks attached to it so that we could support one side of the floor that had they had sagged quite a bit, about an inch, inch and a half, as well as adding two more screw jacks right here underneath the section of two sets of stairs and two floors above them where this long 16 foot uh, double two by 10 over the years had just sagged. And so we resupported that, put a piece of angle iron there to get a, a good strong base and then the two screw jacks and uh, brought all these floors back up to a more, a more level condition. After we got the, that main floor mostly level, uh, we added some floor leveler. As you can see in this video, we finished the second pour of the floor leveler, and it's in real good shape now. We're ready to be able to transition from this side of the room to this. We took care of that, that dip in the middle of the floor, basically where all this trash is right now that's where the dip was that we needed to take care of but this floor is now back to level and we are ready to it's ready for flooring once we get that's our other project going upstairs we this is work that we first started doing uh, we added subfloor to these two bedrooms and we, this bedroom in particular both bedrooms we added wood shims underneath. We didn't want to use floor leveler because of the massive amount of weight that would be required to fix basically an inch sag in this floor. And this one, over the years, the, the joists do tend to, if the house isn't maintained properly, the joists do tend to sag a bit. And so, uh, and this is one floor we still have to do, but for before we could do this floor, we had to correct what was beneath it. As you can see here, we've already resupported the floor here. This was sagging. Amazingly, someone decided to cut through that, but that caused those joists up there to sag. There's a cast iron tub right above this, so you can imagine the weight that was there, and that's very shaky. Plus, as you can see here, We've got a, a beam that's had a lot of water damage to it that used to be something like a two by 10. Very thick, very substantial, but just eaten and rotted away. And then over the years, people decided to just chop these up and that's what they left uh, for that two by 10. And they chopped that one up as well. And you can see that uh, over the years, the different work and different uh, issues cause all kinds of weakness. And that's why we had to resupport that ceiling and the floor above it before we could go any further. And then that leads us to this mess on this side. Okay, so we got our laser level on. We'll show you where we are in this. That's about three and a quarter, three and a half. And that's what we want to get it to. And Caleb's gonna bring the tape measure over and show you where we are. So there we are, that's about seven inches, even if you add a three quarter inch subfloor. So that means we gotta come up about three inches 
on that wall. So there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of work ahead of us to resupport that and get it back to normal. This was probably an addition to give this house bathrooms because it was built originally originally without and then with the need of bathrooms to be indoors we think that's why this was added later. There's so much water damage in this that probably before the roof was repaired it certainly took its toll. Yeah. That's a scary board right there. And there was a bathroom over that section. And that is, those are classic signs of water just eating the wood away. And that's why you gotta have that roof in, in really good shape. My son, when he took these floors off, you can see how these joists are all twisted. Uh, they weren't even tacked in well. Uh, some of these have a nail, maybe two nails toenailed in, but just very poorly supported. And as you look that way, you can see how it's, it's tilting away from house. It's tilting down. And the goal is to get this flooring, the same as the flooring that we already have done. That's the update we have so far. Thanks a lot for watching. If you, get, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We've got lots more videos coming. See you next time.